Hi there. My name is Christopher Mitchell, and I'm the director of the Community Broadband Networks Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Welcome to a series about LTE networks. Where we're going to explore everything from why LTE networks are, are really great options for broadband deployment to the basics of building and configuring your own LTE network. So I hope you enjoy this series. This is kind of like a little expose on um, Google Earth as a tool uh, to sort of visualize where a community network um, and especially like a, a tribal resource communication system uh, would develop. Um, it's a really good tool, I think, uh, for quite a few different things, most of which for me, it's uh, about visualizing your network as a whole. So things can get a little bit abstract, you know, we know so-and-so is pinging here and we have like five people over in this neighborhood, but being able to have all the names, all the addresses, all the phone numbers and all the, the locations on a topographical map, um, it really gives you a sense of flow for how to grow and, uh, you know, how plausible it is to get people and stuff like that. So um, one of the the first things I like to do, uh, you know, when you're when you're when you're starting up a mesh, is to uh, release out into the wild a pre-registration form, uh, wherein people can type in their name, their address, their phone number, and um, you know, city and state, uh, and uh, get onto the list of of, of folks that are going to get hooked up, or, or or say, you know, hey. We're, we're having trouble with com communication and connection. We would like if you guys were to, to you know, try to try to get us linked in. And that'll be your working list off of that. Oftentimes it's in an input uh, form, you know, for uh, Airtable or uh, you can do Google Docs or something like that. Just hand around this, 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 uh, this hyperlink to it. People fill it out and yada, yada. Um, most often, you export those uh, as spreadsheets, which can be exported as CSV files, common separated values, um, which is just this spreadsheet in a, you know, a hyper condensed spreadsheet or something like that. Um, Google Earth likes those. So I have uh, loaded up this one here, um, an example subscriber list with completely anonymized names uh, uh, from a, uh, a network, I think, in Newburgh. Um, so none of these folks are actually uh, real people, as far as I know. Sure, somebody has their name, but um, okay. So you you open the CSV file and you get the data import wizard. Uh, as many powerful wizards, they require a little bit of guidance before you know everything's cast here. So um, inside of here, you'll see your your little rocker of you know folks and uh, comma separated is the uh is the part of the csv thing here so it it automatically determines quite a few things you'll check it out and hit next um this is important here uh that the data set does not contain latitude and longitude information but street addresses that you know customers themselves have imported otherwise you can totally go and identify where your your coordinates are if you're doing it that way um you hit next uh it tries to auto detect your your stuff here, but um, it does need a little bit of help sometimes. So go ahead and just tell it city means city, zip means zip, and country means country. You know, sometimes it'll just have you, you know, do it all in one field. You'd say, write out your name, address, city, state, blah, 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 and you just keep it all hyper condensed and it'd pick it up. It was all in one column. But this one conveniently, we have it formatted so that it separates it out. Um, so you, you identify them. Don't mess with any of this and just hit finish. The wizard starts to do its work here. And uh, this will happen sometimes. So somebody, when they're, they're, they, they, they want to put in their address, put in their PO box. So that's, that's example 32 here. Um, not much you can really do about that. If you don't have it in your documents, reach out to them, try to figure it out. And whenever you get the new address, you can go plug it in here and, you know, 
get them back in the thing. But to make note of, you know, whoever typed in, you can go and find their name, PO Box 1215, get their actual address, give them a phone call or something. This one, uh, for some reason, Google Maps, you know, people have physical addresses, but often, especially in rural areas, um, it'll get a little confused. You know, it'll their their address and their their, their the place they get mail will be nine one seven, but maybe the Google you know Google doesn't have that information or doesn't recognize that location as an address. You can attempt to correct it. You know, maybe if you get a hold of them and they say, oh, it's actually nine. 27 or something like that in which case it sometimes repairs itself if, if you know if, if, if you get the thing right but in this case i i have no idea what the actual address would be and i'd have to reach out to them find that out and fix that as well so this is where you repair that or just add them as an entry later on after you figure it out anyway um a style template is nice if you kind of want to go away from uh you create a new template and you go away from having a, an icon by default it's like a little yellow push pin i actually prefer the little white dots they just kind of stand out a little bit better often you know i do a lot of work in the desert and you know things will blend in so that's nice to do you can save that if you like to um and have that as you know your your default for newberg anyway so now you have your csv imported that peel box is going to appear somewhere on the ocean. Everybody else is going to pop up over here in Newburgh. So now you have all your folks, which is great. You can kind of get an idea of regions of demand. You know, where are people needing this? You know, who, like what neighborhoods are, are subscribing? You can kind of find just like a little bit of correlation. Like, yeah, we have like maybe half a dozen people in the immediate downtown or well, in the immediate residential. But there's a lot more people spread out across these uh, these fields and plains and agricultural areas. You know, you have downtown right here and then all these people up and over here. So it gives you the means to think like, OK, well, where's the need? You know, where's the need? And, you know, how, how am I going to orient this project? Um, I, for this one, uh, would start to push out in the rural areas first, provided I have like a good gateway you know, somewhere down in here, I try to make a link out. And this is where you get is, you know, um, if so, then how? Uh, this is a good tool for determining uh, not only feasibility and like detecting obstacles, but uh, planning your approach to stuff. So um, a good tool to use for that is the, uh, the view ship system. So, um, each of these little pins is uh, like a an actual, um, I don't really know the term for it. They're a tag that you can go, and if you were to click on one, it gives you the name, information, address, so forth, of the person. But you can also right-click on it, drop down into properties, and make adjustments on it that you see fit. Um, let's say this household right down here, uh, they're a ham radio operator, and they've got like a 10 years power in the back of their yard. Great. We'd take that, identify exactly where it is, and you could potentially hop into altitude here, put it as a relative to the ground structure, meaning that it could be adjusted, um, toss it up 10 meters, and uh, to have the extended ground, this just draws a line between where the icon stands elevationally and the floor to give a little bit of a sense. You see that little white line there. And now, this guy in his backyard, we actually have his little tower here. So this is, again, even if I kick on 3D buildings, it's important to note that um, they don't have 3D mapping for this area yet. So uh, yet, yeah, um, this is still working in Flatland, so you have to take some things into consideration. I'll, I'll touch on that in a moment. But um, via this 10-meter structure, you can right-click on it, Show view shed. I didn't stop recording, did I? I just heard a sound. Nah, I'm good. Um, and it'll draw a line of sight within, I think, it's like three miles or something like that. This could take a long time, depending on your computer. Um, this is a this is a RAM intensive thing. It, it you'll, you'll hear fans start buzzing, but uh, 
it'll draw this out to the best of its ability to show exactly where it can and can't hit. Now, this reveals things, you know, that there there may be uh, elevational differences in pockets. So you see this this uh, this little rivet here of trees that run through town. It's plausible that this is a little bit of a valley, and so the low end of elevation through here can keep you from being able to get the globe here. Prudent information to to kind of understanding where things are going. Um, so maybe a, not the best spot for like a major relay to get, you know, out to some of these downtown folks, some of these outliers, you know, you'll see people outside of your view shed there. But you will see people up on the hillside. This this is nice. If you scroll down with a middle mouse button, you'll see that there's a hillside here. And that the hillside looking down into town, great line of sight. So those people definitely will be able to get hooked in. So again, you could say, okay, well, let's connect this guy to this guy. Okay. So that'll be our first move. Let's say these folks up on the hill, um, Kaylee, they have uh, a you know, a, a structure as well. They're ham buddies or something like that. So they would also like to be a relay or host equipment, what have you, uh, be it public or private infrastructure, um, will have a, a system over there. So in order to illustrate this, you'd hit the ruler button up here. It says show ruler, but in reality, this is kind of your, your calligraphy pad. Um, it'll allow you to draw a line between two different objects and illustrate a lot of information therein and create something that will, you know, show your course. So let's draw a line between here by clicking and then clicking on the other end over here. And you can zoom in and make sure you really get it on point too. But for the, for the sake of the matter, we'll just stick to this right now. So some preliminary information it gives you that the heading out of the downtown home Heading that direction is 353 degrees, and that's just about dead north, slightly off northwest. Um, that gives you an idea. Remember, there's a difference between magnetic and true. I believe this reads out in true. You know, you'll have to consult the the magnetic um, differences for the region uh, to determine what the what the true orientation will be. But this gives you uh, a a start to how you should be orienting your antennas. You know, if you're doing this wirelessly, which in, the, in this case, the example you are, um, you would use that orientation uh, on the access point, presumably down here at the town. Um, also, it'll, it'll list off the uh, the distance in miles, kilometers at you know at, at your own at your own discretion. Uh, this is very useful in determining uh, the appropriate array for the job. Um, be it, you know, uh, determining which frequency to use, what equipment to use, uh, what kind of horns or loads or, you know, antenna to use. Um, very prudent information. Um, so let's go ahead and save this uh, as um, downtown to hillside relay. And again, you can color it, change the occupancy, you know, whatever you prefer. I like blue lines for links. They, they stand out against the roads and stuff like that. Um, we'll save this. And now we have this link between the two. So what's nice here is uh, the elevational difference is red across this line. Um, and you can right click on the line itself or uh, over in the, uh, the the places bar there, and ask it to show the elevation profile, which is this. I think it zooms out and gives you this very, very fancy reveal of the whole thing. <laughs> so um, therein you can see, hey, this guy's way up here, 622 feet uh, over 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 water level, I think, and then 200 feet down here. So there's a a difference of like 400. And 30 feet between these two. Um, great stuff. Should be excellent LOS. You know, if you were to draw a line from point A to point B, I don't think you'd run into anything. This does not take into account vegetation 
for obstruction. So line of sight is line of sight. You know, you, I, two miles is really tough for line of sight, but get out there and test your RSSI. You know, see if you can see the hillside and from the other locations, see if you can see downtown. You know, it, it, it's different with LTE and stuff like that, but uh, still the link here is important. So this does also give you the means to identifying some of the uh, topographical structures that I was talking about, like that little valley over there. We could go and say, hey, I see this little bump about a mile out, you know, and I'm, I see it on the elevation thing, but I'm not really sure where that is on the map. As you drag across, you can actually see, you know, where the high points are in association with a little red arrow that's over here on the, uh, on the main street. So you can drag it along and sort of scan about and see obstructions and understand like, oh, right here, you know, ah, it's like, uh, there's like a bump right here. Yeah, it's totally right. Maybe those houses are going to get in the way or something. You know, it, it's, 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 it's nice to have that, you know, it, it, it reflects and mirrors it uh, from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional um, display. So that's really useful. Let's say the link works great. Great. So now we're up on top of the hill. Again, you know, you can right click over here. It, it, it wants the pins to be a certain height before it can show the view shed. It's important to note that like if you were to just click on it without adjusting the height of it, it'd give you a little error message. Like it's too low, has to be at least two meters above ground. So um, let's go get into the altitude, unlock the thing, say it's about 20 meters, 60 foot tower, extend that to ground. And now from there forward, we'd be able to show the view shed. And we can see here in <clears throat> take a break. That we're gonna be able to get all these folks over here just fine. And I, I don't see anybody on the western bank that we wouldn't be able to go and slap a link right down on. Um, it is important to note that because of the topography here, you know, this hillside blocks the rest of this, you know, and you can zoom in here and see like, oh, okay, you know, maybe, maybe that's not the best spot because the, 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 the western side of this shadows all these other, all these other folks over here, you know, we're not going to be able to get, um, McElroy, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a whole region out here that we wouldn't be able to hit. So it's important to consider these shadows. Um, this uh, this determines a lot, you know, this, this, would, this would show you a lot about feasibility. Um, this would show you a lot about, you know, project orientation. And as things, you know, develop, you, 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 uh, you can follow along in Google Maps and keep everything up to date as your mesh develops so that it becomes not only a, uh, you know, a, a roadmap, roadmap um but also a uh also a uh a reference you know who's linked to who oh crap i totally forget you know like why why is this what wait where is this radio who is this even aiming to you know and you can in each one of these uh you can right click upon them get into properties and add all the information you need it's a uh G -E -L -R, the G -E -L -R. PPP to hillside relays um, set at about 63 or whatever, 60 gigahertz frequency. I forget what the bandwidth for those are, but you, I, I like to write at you know, 12,000, some obtuse number. I remember that, <laughs> but uh, you know, you. You'd write the, the frequency in there. You could write the, 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 the bandwidth in there, um, whatever the correct terminology for that would be, uh, and keep things oriented. The tough part here is that this is all entered manually. So, you know, this is a great tool. It's free. It allows you to keep things organized, but it doesn't update itself. You know, like you don't keep up on this stuff. It will become outdated. And when you get into your radios, things could be totally different. Um, Tools like uh, 
UISP, uh, all the other, you know, Ray R R F uh, R F something. That there are there are a variety of other tools out there. We could probably include a link in reference to those. Um, my 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 hope is that people find the ones that are familiar to me and for you. Google Earth Pro is your free and easy to get into. It has really nice up to date uh, mapping. Um, so that's it for Newburg, Oregon, out here, which is you know. It's 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 a reasonably rural area. Um, it's it's a bit out of Hillsboro here, <laughs> so it's not all the way out there, but it's out there enough that the the three D mapping would kick in. And I'd like to, if I could, really quick touch on the three D mapping, just because of that stuff. Um, Rainier, Oregon, recently got some three D mapping. I'll I'll kind of I'll I'll kind of close up a bit on this uh, with. Um, with using this uh, Google Maps tool, it's important to take advantage of the mapping that they've done. So if you zoom into the town here, it, the whole team's worked really, really hard on this. Um, you can see that these buildings are fully rendered. And th this isn't a big town either. It, it's, it's, it's close to Longview, which is a mill town, but like still, you know. So um, I'm gonna do this in order to illustrate uh, how you, you you can put your weight on those those view sheds for a lot of things topographically, but when it comes down to the nitty gritty of it, um, nothing's really gonna tell you flat out what's in the way if it doesn't have three D mapping. So I'm gonna disable three D mapping and say, uh, yeah, these guys. Um, the water treatment plant wants to expand out into teleco and the, the city said hey they've got an old you know coast guard tower back here that's totally nice and updated and everything like that um and so you put a little ping on it you'll know, say so this is the water tube relay and it's, the, it's a 30 foot tower um pop that right in there and um, you say, great, hey, thank you, city. You know, like we'll, we'll work this whole thing out with your education district and all the all the population and everybody that needs it. Um, show the view shed and uh, take another. <laughs> I just started making cold throughout this place. Oh, God. Um, so, uh, and you'd say, hey, great, you know, um, we're gonna have a little bit of a tough time getting up and over the hill. But it looks like, you know, we're going to be able to get all these houses over in here, all these houses over in here, you know, um, that shouldn't be too tricky at all. Uh, and you were to like move forward on the project, you know, with thinking, you know, it, and honestly, it, it, it's an assumption at that point, assuming that there's line of sight to these homes. Um, we're in. If you were to calculate this view shed with the actual, you know, the mapping that they've done, you would see here. <laughs> like these little pauses, yeah. Um, it's not quite as good as they make it out to be. So, shooting up this direction, the immediate wall of trees. You know, an immediate wall of trees. Uh, shooting out this direction, an immediate wall of trees. You know, you go, wait, hang on a second. You know, maybe this isn't the best spot. Still, you know, moderate coverage for that. That um, south, this would be south, southeastern, southeastern, or just eastern, eastern residential district. But, um, you know, not, not anything like you thought it was initially. These park trees eat up a lot of it. Some of these buildings even eat up some of it, you know. And so it's it's important to identify obstacles, you know. Ten meters doesn't even actually leap over a lot of this right here, too. So it's 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 case by case, you know. Getting down there and having to look at things is uh, essential. So um, one thing that's nice I, I, that uh, they do a really good job of uh, all the way through, just about the you know, entire. Honestly, it's like a planet. Is street view. Street view is an inextinguishable tool. So let's go back for a second. Uh, 
to Newberg with this knowledge that, you know, things may not always be as they seem. Um, if you were to hop down in here at this link we plotted, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and you were to uh, say, okay, well, let's, let's really get down there and have a look at things. You can grab your guy, and even though they don't have 3D mapping, well, they don't have it at that house. Dang it. But <laughs> they do have it at nearby residences. So therein, you can kind of still get a good idea. But let's let's say for the sake of things, you know, that... No, let's let's go straight from there and still try to get an idea of what's going on. Because this, this could be a, a challenging situation. You'd find your spot as close as you can to the residence and zoom down in. And you find, well, okay, there's... For one, there's more vegetation down here than I have initially thought too. Um, you can get some information. Bridgeview Village, whoever these folks are, maybe it's important to coordinate with them, you know. And you can get an idea of okay, there's some there's some larger trees in here. We might need to work things out. You know, there may be obstruction potentially up ahead. I identification like this is the, like a limitless tool. If you're working remotely, uh, you know, even just from your office before you actually gotten on site you can determine a lot of stuff you can make a lot of connections you can put a put a lot put a lot of dots together um just running around in street view looking at homes finding antennas finding water towers finding commercial buildings finding you know any kind of vertical asset that you might be able to use to your advantage or coordinate with or uh, sometimes even you know, find out other people doing things in the town. You might find a couple of radios here and there and say, hang on, there's already somebody, you know, doing telecom here. Maybe we know them. Maybe we could work together. And um, there, there's, a whole, there's a whole lot of things you could do. Um, but street view is an indispensable tool, man, I tell you. Uh, so where am I at here? Yeah. Concerning the relay up here, you know, you you would really have to go in here and find out exactly what the views look like. Um, coordinating with them and getting pictures of the site itself are essential. Sometimes you know you can get a you can get a feel for what things look like, but with this dense of vegetation, it's going to be tough to do anything like that. Yeah. Still. So that's that's kind of a little bit of. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should touch on. Hmm. Yeah, there is some important information about identification of. Okay, so height is a thing that can be estimated. Uh, via Google Maps a little bit. I don't have a clear example for this, but I'm going to try to find one here really quick because you often have kind of a hard time determining exactly how tall something is uh, from satellite imaging. Um, you know, it, it'll look like it's a, a, a good set of stories tall, but you're never really going to have a clear picture until you're right there and there. So um, one way I do that, this is a good example. One way I do that is... Uh, the cast of the shadows. So um, if you were to look at the trees in this image here and tell me which one's going to be a problem towards shooting radio, uh, you would be inclined to say the tallest. Um, and determining the tallest is the tough part. So of these trees, you know, these ones over here don't cast very much of a shadow. You see there's like a little bit of a black line on the outside of it, not much bigger than the shed itself. But if you get over here, you see this guy here, big shadow cast all the way over to it. These ones too. Those might actually be a little bit more of an issue. And sure enough, if you drop down your 3D mapping, I'm banking on this. I bet I yeah. Those are those are taller. Those are tall enough that they might actually become an issue. You know, and that's that's your means for determination between all this what looks like agricultural stuff, maybe oranges or or, or olives or something. Um, these, you know, you can kind of hedge out and say that those those are going to be the blockers. We might have to navigate around that. You know, there 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 will be in higher frequency links uh, and you know customer provided equipment stuff. Uh, 
opportunities and kind of calculate the most effective way to orient stuff uh, based on you know what what you can what, just what you can suss out of it. I think that just about covers it. This is the that that should be about the tools you need to get in there and start using Google Maps uh, and Google Earth Pro as a tool for illustrating and kind of um, coordinating your projects. I, I hope this has been helpful. Um, you all know how to get a hold of me, and I'd be more than happy to help at uh, any time with just about anything. So, thank you.